Hi guys, just a really quick video about the government consultation on drones. It closes in 10 days time, the 15th of March, 11.45. So uh, probably best to try and get it in the night before, at the very latest, the 14th. Um, ideally get it in long before that. Uh, it's an online multiple choice thing. Um, you, can, you don't have to do it all in one sitting, you can sort of save it and come back. It tells you how far through you are um, and that sort of thing. But you can also send an email. So what I'd recommend is if you go through the multiple choice, you'll see they've given you a few options. Um, don't sort of be forced into something that actually you don't think when you in your heart of hearts when you sort of think, hang on, why are we talking about this at all? Um, just sort of take a step back and say, um, why are we even talking about registration? Why are we even talking about uh, all these things, mandatory this, mandatory that. Where is the evidence? Um, and I would fill it in with that in mind. So uh, on a lot of them, I've said none of the above. You know, there is no evidence to, to support any of these options being required. Um, there, there aren't you know, thousands of people being injured in the streets and in the parks by drones. Um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, what I would say as well is this whole consultation has been sort of brought about by sort of a vicious circle really. What we have is pilots report seeing something. Um, sometimes they say an object, sometimes they say a drone specifically. And that, when, they, when I say report, they literally fill in a form on the UK Airprox Board website I don't even think it's mandatory. Um, you fill that form in. The UK Airprox Board meet um, periodically. I think I'm right in saying once a quarter. They go through all these reports that they've received and they have a chat about them and they publish them. Now what happens then, the Airprox Board reports come out. They look all very official. Um, there's, uh, there's usually a little diagram and a little summary written by the Airprox Board. Um, and the media then pick up on that and they see this official government document that's come out um, which shows, for argument's sake, seven drone sightings in the last six months and of course it makes headlines. Now the media whip up a storm with anything like that um, and it's all over the headlines, it's all over the uh, uh, you know news websites and the television and all that. And then the media um, uh, the ministers, sorry, live and die by the media, really. Their um, public perception is, is a very, very strong thing, and they must be seen to be addressing these things. And so that's why you get government ministers asking the DFT to do a consultation um, on this. Uh, and really, in their heart of hearts, the DFT, I've spoken to someone quite senior at the DFT, they sort of know that, you know, the Airprox board reports aren't necessarily what the media make them out to be. You know, in a lot of cases, they are just um, what the pilot thought he saw published word for word, um, you know, in the Airprox board report. There's, there's no further uh, investigation. There's no other pilot to interview. There's, you know, there's really nothing other than, you know, this pilot thought he saw this. Um, that's not an empirical fact. That is, um, there's all sorts of things that come into play with with uh, with seeing things. For instance, the, the, the apparently drone sightings are increasing yeah, according to the uh, Airprox Board reports. You would say that drone sightings are increasing, but the thing is, pilots are now used to the idea of of their colleagues having seen drones or. They know what a drone is. They're sort of expecting to see a drone. And if they now see anything, it will be, ah, that's a drone. Put it, you know, report that we saw a drone. And that's called confirmation bias, where you're expecting to see something and you do. Um, before, they might not think anything of it. Oh, you know, or it might have gone down as an object in, in an Airbox board report, but they probably didn't, probably wouldn't have even reported it, which is, oh, that was weird. Um, they wouldn't have bothered, or it may have gone down as a UFO in, in previous, um, you know, before drones were in the popular psyche. 
So we've got to be really careful not to make rules on the basis of absolutely no solid evidence on some reports that you know even the Airprox board and the DFT really know uh, aren't really the right mechanism or aren't really what the media um, purport them to be. Um, and uh, we've got to take a step back, I think, and just say, we don't have the data to do any of this stuff. Um, until we do, uh, let's sit tight. There's no, there's no problems. People aren't being hurt and killed and, you know, all over the place. Let's uh, stay as we are. And, and just if you fill the consultation in with, with that in mind, you know, if, the, if you really strongly feel that, um, you know, registration is required or mandatory insurance is required or whatever it is, then by all means fill that in. But it, to me, there's no evidence to say that. Um, and there may be some people who willfully disobey the rules. Um, problem is, you make registration mandatory, you make insurance mandatory, you make training mandatory. There are still those people who will um, go out of their way to disobey those rules. So what you're doing by mandating all those things is you're impacting lots of people who, uh, the vast majority, who are safe, sensible, legal, get insurance, uh, fly in a, in, a, in a nice big open space and all those good things, they're all going to now be impacted. You're going to put some people off buying drones in the first place because they have to go through the, all this rigmarole of, of registering and getting insurance and going on a training course and all this stuff um, for no good reason because the people who you're trying to reach and trying to stop those that tiny percentage who perhaps willfully disobey the rules will still willfully disobey the rules. Um, so that's my view on it. Feel free to let me know what you think. Um, the mechanism for doing that, I think, is you fill in the consultation online, uh, put in none of the above in the relevant places, and then also send an email um, to the email address on the consultation and say, uh, I filled in your consultation, but you know, I just want to register my thoughts, which are, you know, this whole consultation is based on a number of assumptions um, and they're stated in the consultation document. Um, all, all these assumptions about um, you know, public safety and aviation and all this kind of stuff. And there's no evidence for them. There's no good evidence for them. The uh, EASA did a report, um, their Geo Limitation Task Force did a report uh, just before the public opinion, uh, technical opinion, came out last September. Um, sorry, the GFT. GTF report came out uh, in September 2016 and they actually said, I'll copy and paste it in the description, they said there isn't enough reliable data to draw any conclusions um, about about this topic. You know, the, the, these sort of sightings aren't reliable enough to draw conclusions from. Um, if that's what EASA are saying, you know, I think, uh, I think we should follow that advice. So there you go. Please get your uh, replies in uh, before 11.45 on the 15th of March. Um, they will be read. They will be taken into account. It is worth doing. So please do. All right. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye bye.